2015. This is my top five best moments and top five worst moments. So we're gonna start with the top five best moments. So number five is gonna be Samus being featured in Yoshi's Woolly World. Uh, the Yoshi Woolly, Woolly World game looks really fun, looks really cute, really creative, and I'm excited that you could use your Samus amiibo, if you just so happen to get one, uh, to be able to, I guess, put Samus in the game in some capacity. Um, so they just kind of touched on this, announced this a little bit. Um, it was very much sort of on the back burner during like the, uh, the treehouse. Um, usually with E3, there's like a bunch of stuff that gets released like way afterwards, like the day, like the next day or day or so. And so we haven't really unearthed all the secrets of E3. But it's nice to know that Samus is going to be present in some capacity, which we'll get into in a minute. And number four is the Rare Collection that's coming out for Microsoft's Xbox One. Uh, this is actually kind of the first title that I'm like, okay, I could see myself buying an Xbox One and you know getting this game. Uh, one really important factor in this, though, is the fact that a game is going to be on this collection. It's just like a bunch of rare games from the developer Rare or Rareware or whatever you want to call them. And they're actually coming out with games like Blast Corps and Jeff Force Gemini, um, Perfect Dark, Perfect Dark Zero, like a bunch of, of games all kind of thrown in in one giant collection. So it's really cool. Here's my, here's my dilemma though. I was kind of wanting like new sequels to these old games. Um, but you know, I know that's gonna take some time, so I'm pretty happy about this collection. It's just a really good, solid collection of games. The most important game, though, that's being released on this is Battletoads Arcade. Apparently, Battletoads Arcade is gonna be on this collection. That game has never been released outside of the arcade, so this is actually huge news for this game to be released. I, I haven't read up too much on it because I just haven't done it, but I'm, I'm interested in, in checking it out and seeing if they're gonna keep the original, like, um, you know, resolution or, you know, if they're gonna, um, you know, how this all came to be. Actually, I'm interested, uh, since EA put the game out, if they had to sign something with EA. I know they published it, but still, I'm interested to see maybe a little bit of background in regards to the Battletoads game, so, you know, whatever. Number three is backwards compatibility for the Xbox One. Now, I don't own Xbox One. The only system that I have is a Wii U of the current gen systems. I, I like the idea that there's gonna be 100 backwards compatible games with more on the way as time goes on. That's really cool. I, I kind of feel like it's something that should have launched at the beginning of this system. I think they really would have won people over. But it's, it's kind of a giant screw you to Sony because the, they're making it so that there's, there's gonna be software that's gonna make it compatible for you to be able to play Xbox 360 games on your Xbox One. So you don't need to pay for those licenses to be able to do that. You basically just put the game in and play it. So that's really cool. So kudos to Microsoft for doing that. That's awesome. Next game is Star Fox. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about Star Fox in a minute, but uh, I mean, game looks great. I mean, graphically, it looks really good, really solid. Um, gameplay looks great as well. I like the dual mechanic with the, uh, with the a pad with the gamepad where you can look at the screen uh, of the gamepad and basically that can be your cursor kind of like a first person sort of thing so that's really cool I, I, I was feeling that um, and we'll talk a little bit more about Star Fox and the story and whatnot in in the in the next list the number one best thing about E3 this year was absolutely in the, the announcement of Final Fantasy 7 the remake I'm just floored. I'm still like so excited. Like Sony basically just sold me a PS4 and I know it's coming out on other platforms, but let's face it, I have a Wii U and that's all I have and they're coming, they're not gonna come out with it on the Wii U. Like that's pretty much guaranteed. So my chances of getting this are either on an Xbox or on a PlayStation. And from what I've seen, I, I think in all honesty, I would probably rather get a PlayStation 4 at this point. So if I'm gonna go with the next gen system, um, or, or current gen or whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm going to go with probably a PS4. Uh, plus they get it first and I want this game day one, so super excited. 
Now, let's get to the top five worst things about E3 2015 so far. Uh, I gotta say the lack of new sequels for old rare franchises kind of bums me out. Um, as I was saying before, I was really hoping to see like Jet Force Gemini 2 or uh, maybe like a Banjo-Kazooie 2 or rather a Banjo-Kazooie, what, what would it be, 4? Four? 4 now? Yeah, 4. Um, just, you know, something different, Perfect Dark. I mean, we haven't had a sequel to a Perfect Dark game in a long time, other than the re-release of the original. So it would be pretty cool to see something like that come about. Uh, Cameo, that was a great game. You know, Cameo, that, that'd be cool to get a sequel to that. So even though Rare did announce a brand new franchise, uh, the pirate thing, I wasn't really feeling it. So, I don't know, just my personal opinion. Next thing is actually something that was announced during the week of E3, but was before the presentations themselves, which is Ryu in Smash Brothers. I'm against this, personally. Any, like, fighting game character like Ryu, Chun-Li, or, you know, Heiachi from Tekken, like, any of that stuff, the costumes, that's one thing. But actually making a character who's already in a franchise that, that really hasn't been on a Nintendo system since, well, if you count Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, or Super Street Fighter 4 for the 3DS. I mean, you know, it's kind of a slap in the face to Nintendo fans in a way. Uh, plus, you're making it more of a fighting game that's a traditional fighting game and less about it being a Smash Brothers character. So you, you have this option of playing as him in a Smash Brothers capacity, but the moves are stronger if you do them as the traditional Capcom, like, you know, down to, you know, the whatever you want to call it, quarter, quarter circle forward uh, punch or whatever, so you could do a Hadouken. I'm kind of like, I'm not feeling that. I, I don't know what it is, but I just personally I'm against it. I'm not okay with it. Uh, Roy was a great addition. It's great to have Roy back. And the new Amiibos that they released uh, look great as well. Uh, I, You know, I said I wasn't going to get any more Amiibo, but that, that Rob the Robot and Falco, man, those are calling my name. So those are really cool. So... Um, yeah, Smash Brothers uh, announcement was kind of lackluster. Uh, some of the new levels that they were like, yeah, these new levels are coming out, um, seem pretty cool. Um, basically re-releasing old levels as new levels, kind of like reskinning them. Uh, looks pretty cool. Um, so I'm interested in the Zelda 64 one specifically. That'll be great. Shin Megami Tensei X Fire Emblem, if that's the official name of the game. I've seen three trailers now for this game. I still have no idea what it's about. Uh, is it a J-pop uh, uh, dance vocaloid uh, party where it's you're walking through a town and I, I just I have absolutely no idea what the game is about. None, no clue. There's been no hint of gameplay. I mean, there's a couple scenes that they've shown of like people flying around and doing all these dances and like and and, and like walking through a town. Like I have no clue what this game is about. No gameplay footage has really been shown about this. And for a game that they're highlighting as they're like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming for now three years. Last year we got pretty much the same trailer and now this year we're getting another trailer that's basically the same thing. So it's like, what are you doing? Like, release some gameplay footage or don't bring it out again. Second thing is Star Fox killing the storyline for Star Fox. No crystal. Uh, General Pepper is back as General. Peppy is back, or I'm sorry, yeah, General Pepper is back as the main General. Uh, Peppy is back in an R-Wing. So I'm kind of like, okay, so this is like a side story to Star Fox 64. It all takes place like before Star Fox Adventures. Like, Crystal's nowhere to be seen. Um, you know, no mention, no real mention of plot. Uh, which I'm, I'm kind of bummed about because I enjoyed the Star Fox plot. I really like the branching paths that they took in Star Fox Command. I thought that was cool and Star Fox Assault, how it kind of uh, made it so that way, um, you know, you could play through it again. You can get, you know, uh, different endings and stuff, uh, you know, and Star Fox Command kind of did the same thing. I really like the transitioning into the, like, little feety, uh, you know, uh, bird type of uh, our wing thing that's really cool but uh yeah i was kind of bummed that there's no storyline here or there is a storyline but it's 
kind of like a retelling or a reimagining of Star Fox 64. I mean, we, we just got Star Fox 64 3, uh, 3D on the 3DS, and that was great. I loved it. I had a great time playing and beating that game, but I've played Star Fox 64 now on my N64, on my 3DS, like, do I, like, do I want to play through it again? Like, is this going to be an actual reimagining, or is it going to be a sequel, or, I don't know, they're just very unclear story-wise on everything, so I'm kind of bummed about that as well. The last thing is Metroid. I, you guys know, I'm a huge Metroid fan, I've done tons of reviews for Metroid games, and I, I'm just, I'm really heartbroken. Um, Nintendo had a, sh all they had to do they didn't even have to come out with anything crazy or insane or really highly detailed. Just give me like Samus walking down a dark alley or something like that or walking down like a dark path and then just camera pans up to her face, you know, be it with helmet, without helmet, whatever. And just, that's it. Metroid 2016, 2017, whatever you want to do. We got the Metroid 30th anniversary coming up. The entire time they just focused on Mario. We've had such a huge amount of Mario games releasing on this system. Like, I don't know what they're doing. I, I really don't know. They've got all these Metroid fans that wanted a Metroid game, and they come out with this Metroid Prime Hunters pseudo sequel that just, oh man, I was just so disappointed with that. I mean, that was like, it was like a kick in the face for me. It's like all these years we've been waiting for a new Metroid game, and they finally announced something, and it's like not at all Metroid. There's no, to me, Metroid is not Metroid without Samus. I'm sorry, every single Metroid game has starred Samus. Even in Metroid Prime Pinball, you're still playing as Samus. So it's like, now you're gonna come out with a game for all these like weird characters that look like uh, those weird, like, Walmart figures that you would get. Like if you go to Walmart and go in the Star Wars aisle or whatever for the toys, they look like those. Like nothing about this game screams Metroid. I don't know, really bummed. So E3, you know, the best parts were were honestly some of the other stuff that some of the other companies were doing. Um, I, I mean, I was impressed with Yoshi's Woolly World. I mean, I was impressed with Star Fox. My only issue is that Nintendo didn't push out anything for 2016, 2017. And here's my thing about that, and this is what I was thinking. Maybe they're holding off because they're going to be announcing the Nintendo NX next year. And with that, they're moving development over from the Wii U over to, you know, maybe they're coming out with a new Metroid game, but it's not coming out for the Wii U. Maybe it's coming out for the NX. Who knows? I have no idea. But what I can say is I was thoroughly disappointed with the lack of Metroid. Oh, man. Just bums me out, man. So tell me what you guys thought. What were your hits? What were your misses in E3? What are you psyched for? What are you bummed about? Tell me in the comments below. And I'm gonna go drink my sorrows away. Yep. Well, not with, you know, booze or anything. Probably just like root beer or something like that, you know. Leave the comments below.